Hello friends, welcome to uh, the Messiah, Bride of Christ for Hebrew uh, Radio Nation, Hebrew Nation Radio. Uh, but online this is uh, uh, following up on the topic we started for anyone and it's uh, uh, focus on my favorite author, Ellen White. I know that that might cause a few people to cringe, uh, but that's probably because they never spent much time uh, reading her. Um, I would have to say I grew up as a Seventh-day Adventist, but uh, not until medical school uh, when I was uh, um, struggling to um, even survive. I was challenged by a, a, an intern who said he was lo losing his Christian experience in medical school until he decided to spend an hour a day in Bible study, prayer, spiritual pursuits, and I decided to do that with Ellen White's book, The Desire of Ages, which is on the life of Christ. And by the time I finished that book, uh, I was inspired within, uh, through and through, and my grades got better uh, from C's, they went to B's. Uh, uh, I struggled with issues about pharmacology, which the author, Ellen White, did not uh, really want to be taught, and I'm seeing now that uh, prescription drugs are a leading cause of death. She was right. The uh, church leaders that uh, took her school and hijacked it for different purposes to get accreditation were uh, badly mistaken. And I just think uh, we need to uh, uh, expect the trouble that's coming as a result of that when she saw an earthquake at Loma Linda uh, with buildings great and small falling to the ground and many lives were blotted out. Uh, actually that uh, ties in with pri Bible prophecy very well for the day of the Lord, the end time period when it is initiated, uh, God is going to shake terribly the earth, the whole earth, I believe, and uh, the San Andreas, which uh, is adjacent to Loma Linda, will deactivate. It's 80 years over, uh, overdue right now, but uh, they say, seismologists do, that it's locked, loaded, ready to roll. Well, um, I believe that's a year away and people in that area should get out of there. Uh, and I've been there uh, twice visiting, trying to warn people. Uh, not easy. <laughs> they think you're crazy like Noah was crazy, you know. Uh, 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 bottom line, God's prophets throughout history, and I'm not claiming to be a prophet in a special sense. I've had no visions or dreams. But on the other hand, uh, as Ellen White said often, I was shown and I think I've been shown through scripture and through uh, logical reasoning. God says, come, let us reason together. And uh, it makes good sense to see that um, a poetic justice will be people getting what they deserve in the end. And uh, sadly, the, the Laodicean church, described as blind and naked, has done bad stuff. And anciently, it ended in an earthquake around 63 AD in the city of Laodicea. And I think it's type and antitype for us. So moving on from uh, that, I want to deal with uh, uh, reflections on Ellen White from a happy perspective. Yesterday, uh, actually in the first half of this, when I did the video for 25 minutes, we looked at uh, ways, several ways, that she was 100 years ahead of time on tobacco, exactly 100 years ahead of the Surgeon General when she said it was a, a malignant poison Surgeon General 100 years later in 1964 said uh, a malignant tumors of the lung, he linked it to what she called a, a uh, malignant poison. Well, um, drugs also, she said adverse drug reactions. She didn't use the word adverse drug reactions, but they are a leading cause of death today and, and illness. And she said that they, the drugs change the form and location. That's an apt description of, uh, of adverse drug reactions. Well, she also uh, wrote strongly against um, coffee and tea, which really contain a drug, caffeine. And uh, it, uh, Dr. I think Pavlov uh, called it bad habit glue because it glues bad habits together. People uh, uh, drink coffee and then they want to smoke because the smoke cal calms their nerves down, caffeine gears it up, keeps them in balance. Uh, when I was in medical school, I was told about a study that in which uh, uh, animals, research animals, were given the opportunity of drinking alcohol or water. And on a good diet, they would drink water, preferred it. But when they drank a crummy diet, uh, they would uh, get, um, they would drink some alcohol. And if they added, added coffee and 11 spices, 
the alcohol consumption soared. It went up, way up. Uh, but once they changed the diet, took the, the bad stuff away, uh, they did well again. So that's really the intent of uh, what we can do. Uh, if people have a problem with alcohol, uh, eat a simple, bland, veg vegetable-based diet, plant-based, and uh, without coffee uh, or, or spices, and uh, the thirst for something strong will disappear, be less. Um, diet, Dr. P uh, Clive McKay, Professor of Nutrition at Cornell summarized the seven-page review by saying there's no better overall guide. He was amazed that Ellen White did not incorporate the fads and fallacies of her day. She wasn't just plagiarizing this, that, and the other stuff. I believe that she was, a, she borrowed maybe, but she was an inspired borrower. God showed her, I believe, impressed her with what to, to, to borrow. And uh, I see that uh, a lot from, uh, still to be true in other areas, not just health. We've I'm just reviewing yesterday's, uh, the first part of this, uh, uh, part one. This is part two on Ellen White. Was she a plagiarist? No, she was 100 years ahead of her time, and she often borrowed things, but made them into a bigger overall framework. Um, want to look at some other books that she wrote. Uh, I took a course in college called Education, based on her book, Education and uh, was later uh, appreciative of the fact that Dr. Florence Stratemeyer of Columbia University, not a Seventh-day Adventist, but came across that book probably by a student who uh, called it to her attention, and she was uh, uh, similarly, like Dr. Clive McKay, amazed at the advanced concepts educationally of a balanced, uh, not just in the mind, but uh, physical, mental, spiritual, social, type of thing, and uh, the f fact of a uh, moral uh, standpoint, uh, not just, you know, you can, you can uh, be smart and make an atom bomb to kill everybody, but uh, she uh, uh, eulogized Ellen White and uh, said that she her concepts were uh, more than 60 years ahead of time. She said that in the 1960s, uh, after uh, Ellen White had passed around the turn of the century. Uh, I mean, she wrote the book around the turn of the century. So anyway, i just like to share um, a couple thoughts with you uh, that I appreciated. She said, um, higher than the highest human thought can reach is God's ideal for his children. Godliness, God-likeness is the goal to be reached. And she uh, talked about the harmonious development of the physical, mental, and uh, uh, spiritual powers. She said, um, we should do our best in the work that lies nearest, commit our ways to God, watch for indications of his providence. These are rules that ensure a safe choice in a life vocation. Well, uh, I've tried to follow that and I found it a sound guide to do your best and what's nearest. I remember in college in a course of called calculus that I was thinking I was gonna fail, but uh, I did the best I could and there was uh, a lot of people that dropped out of the course and because there was a grade on the curve, I, I survived when they dropped out, I guess. We started out with 40 some, ended up with about uh, nine or 10, but uh, I was blessed to survive. And uh, in this book, she uh, mentions other concepts. In fact, I'll, I'll give you an, a, a sample of it. Uh, I like, she has one of the best statements on um, um, evolution that I've found. It's in the ch a chapter on science and the Bible. She uh, mentions how that science and the Bible both have the same author, God. <laughs> and so the stories will be the same. And she said, this is a classic statement, I think. It's one of the longest sentences I've found in Ellen White, but it's in page 130 of her book, Education. When consideration is given to man's opportunities for research, how brief his life, how limited is his sphere of action, and how restricted his vision, how frequent, and how great the errors in his conclusions, especially as concerns the events thought to antedate Bible history. How often the supposed deductions of science are revised or cast aside, and with what readiness the assumed periods of the Earth's development is from time to time increased or diminished by millions of years, and how the theories advanced by different scientists conflict with one another. Considering all this, 
shall we for the privilege of tracing our descent from germs and mollusks and apes consent to cast away the statement of holy writ so grand in its simplicity that God created man in his own image in the image of God created he him wow powerful statement why do we want to throw away our heritage made in God's image so we can believe we came from germs and apes okay if we think we came from an ape we'll act like an ape and that's what uh, you learn in public school sadly um, the Seventh Day Adventist denomination turned from what Ellen White was saying and wanting, and when they hijacked her school of, uh, that she wanted for natural remedies, Loma Linda, every other school wanted to become accredited also so they could send students to be to that accredited school educationally. And so we did a, a damn thing, in my opinion, sorry for the language, but uh, we copied the worldly educational curriculum when she said in her book that the Bible should be central and it would develop our character and that there's nothing that um, uh, develops the mind such as, as Bible study, basically. I wish that I had had a medical education like she had in mind because uh, at the turn of the century, uh, in her time, 1918, the flu epidemic, why the brightest and best people came from uh, to Battle Creek to the hospital Adventist for uh, drugless care and a good diet. And that's where uh, we got uh, Kellogg's Corn Flakes. John Harvey Kellogg was the medical director, Seventh-day Adventist. His brother got the recipes and made the Kellogg's Corn Flakes. Uh, C.W. Post also did it, Corn Flakes. He was a patient in the, in the sanitarium. Uh, J.C. Penney, Henry Ford, Thomas Edison, Luther Burbank, Eleanor Roosevelt, bright and brilliant, uh, brilliant people. Uh, uh, I think, sadly, uh, if Loma Linda had any one of those now, they would you would blast it across the whole denomination as uh, how honored they were to have somebody of importance to come. But uh, they are filling the Loma Linda with hospitals. They've just finished the seventh one. They're not all Adventists. Uh, there's a veterans hospital and a community hospital, and a pediatric hospital, and a cancer hospital, and a rehab hospital, you know, uh, brilliant stuff. Actually, a missionary told me as we looked over to the university hospital, he said, monuments to our failure, because we should be teaching people how to live, not how they can depend on drugs, and the more drugs they get, the sicker they get, okay? So, uh, sad situation for Loma Linda, and the earthquake that's coming, I think, in, in 2023, when end times click in and Judgment Day begins, as Ellen White said. Well, uh, that's on this side. I want to uh, look at a few other books that she wrote with you just to give you a sampling. Um, I appreciate so much uh, her book. Uh, this is um, really Christ's Object Lessons. It's a book on parables of Christ. And uh, she, uh, she explains the parables with such beauty and meaning. She said, uh, in, in every age, there's a new development of truth, a message of God to the people of that generation. Old truths are all essential. New truth is not independent of the old, but an unfolding of it. And uh, skipping a few lines, she said, he who rejects or neglects the new does not really possess the old. I think that we need to understand uh, new truths and be open to them. We're supposed to be like Bereans who searched the scriptures whether they were so. And so um, I'm just saying um, that's an example. In this book, page 34, she tells how the whole Jewish economy is full of instruction for us. Its impressive ceremonies were designed to teach the people that at the time appointed, one would come to whom that ceremony pointed. And in, in uh, the book, Great Controversy, page 399, at the bottom of the page, I remember it because it's almost four dollars, three ninety nine point four. Just like Christ died as a Passover lamb, she says, in like manner, the types that relate to the second advent must be fulfilled at the time pointed out in the symbolic service. Well, uh, in the symbolic service, judgment fell on Passover. Uh, God said, "I will execute judgment." In Exodus twelve twelve, it was Passover time, and I think. Uh, 
when judgment day clicks in for the earthquake it will be passover indeed okay judgment day uh, and we should watch and pray if we didn't know when to watch we we, uh, we might have an excuse but uh, the Bible gives us that example and we should be better stewards than just listening to the church that wants to follow Rome Rome boasts that they abolished the Jewish festivals well how good are they you know that's the little horn that uh, uh, made war with God's saints in Daniel 7 verse 21 and uh, historians say that uh, 50 to 100 million Christians were martyred during the Dark Ages. Thank you, Rome, but they don't apologize. And they did it again with Rwanda in 1994 uh, when about a million Protestant Tutsis were slaughtered by their Catholic neighbors. And uh, Pope John Paul just said, sorry, you know, my foot. Uh, he probably was the one that told the UN just to uh, stand down and let the local government handle it. The UN is a Catholic organization with mostly Catholic organ uh, nations, and if they're not Roman Catholic, they are Catholic with little c, universal, go along to get along, uh, homosexuality is all right, uh, this is all right, that's all right, uh, Pope can forgive any sin, except he can't overcome any sin, neither can their priests that are uh, accused of pedophilia and rape of nuns in closed convents, etc. So, um, you know, uh, there's still freedom of speech on this topic, maybe not on health with certain viruses, but uh, at least uh, this is, for the time being, uh, the direction that the world is going is not good. So uh, I would just say, let us uh, look deeper, study our Bibles and get ready because we're at the end of the world. And we need to prophesy again, time of judgment, when we see Jerusalem compassed with armies, judgment is impending because Jerusalem represents God's people. And it's not just about those over there now. They really aren't God's people over there now. And God is going to allow the Muslims to chase them out, basically. Uh, they're just there for free land. 90% have no interest in their spiritual heritage. 8% are Orthodox Jews that hate Christ. And there's just about 2% of missionaries that are good people, uh, my, my estimate. And they're going to be out of there, uh, I think, in 2023 when... It says in Zechariah 14, 1 and 2, nations will be gathered against Jerusalem, houses rifled, women ravished, half the city will go into captivity. Then the Lord will go forth. And part of it is the fact that he will roar from Jerusalem, the heavens and earth will shake. Well, you can assume that if the heavens and earth will shake, it's going to be a big deal. And really that initiates the end time. And there are multiple reasons pointing with timelines to next year, uh, 2023. We've covered this before on, on other talks. Won't go there right now, but um, just want to give you some more examples of, of how uh, this all fits together. I have a uh, book here, Who is Israel and Why You Sh Need to Know, okay? Written by Batya Wooten, uh, a Messianic Jewish woman who did the research and pulled uh, from different sources where Israel, when God scattered them among the nations, where they went. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Anglo-Saxons are Isaac's sons, Isaac's sons, descendants of Abraham, for example. Uh, Denmark is uh, Den, uh, Denmark is Dan, okay, tribe of Dan. Uh, uh, the different ones, Ostrogoths, Alamania, uh, France, F Franks, the ten tribes that scattered and, uh, uh, and filled Europe are basically many of them Jewish in, in nature or origin. So um, we won't uh, go into it except to say that this picture shows an end time event in Ezekiel 37. It's around verse 16, 18, or 19 when two sticks, Ezekiel's given two sticks to put together and they become one stick in his hand. But it's after a shaking, in, uh, which I'm saying is the earthquake in uh, Daniel 30, I'm sorry, Ezekiel 37 as well. Ezekiel is shown a valley of dry bones. Uh, and God asks Ezekiel, can these bones live? He said, Lord, you know, I don't know. But uh, there was a great shaking in verse 7. And the bones came together. Sinew came on the bones. Breath came in. They, and... Uh, the, and just like the two sticks that said they, uh, one for Israel and one for Judah, 
I think Judah represents Jews who accept Messiah, and Israel represents Christians who accept Torah, the biblical laws. And together they will be fully compatible, and they become one kingdom in verse 22 of Ezekiel 37. So, uh, yes, the, when Christ said, uh, uh, search the scriptures, he was talking about the Old Testament. Those were the only ones in existence at that time. And uh, Ellen White did it. She understood it better than uh, we do today, I think. And sadly, the Seventh-day Adventist publishers changed her title. You know, this is uh, Prophets and Kings. But when I went to the General Conference headquarters in Washington, D.C., Silver Springs, and went down to visit uh, White Estate uh, in the basement, they had a glass case with uh, all of her books. And on the far right was a... Uh, blue book with gold letters, The Captivity and Restoration of Israel. I said, what's this? They, they said, oh, that's Ellen White's last book. It was Prophets. We just changed the title to Prophets and Kings. Well, that's a bad idea because it obscures her message in the book. You know, people title a book for a message they want to give. And uh, her title comes from Jeremiah 30, verse 3 which says, Lo, the days come, I will bring again the captivity of my people, Israel and Judah, and cause them to return to the land that I gave their fathers, they shall possess it. Okay, and verse 11 says, I'm with you to save you, though I make a full end of all other nations. I will not make a full end of you. And in the latter day you'll consider it. That's the last verse of the chapter 30. Next verse, I'll gather, the next chapter is chapter 31. God, at the same time, it says, God says, I will bring them from the north country, which was Babylon, gather them from the coast, the lame, the blind, the woman with child. A great company will return there. He that scattered Israel will gather him and keep him as a shepherd does his flock. Your children will come again to their own border. Uh, they'll come from the land of the enemy. That's, those are verses 8, 10, 16, and 17 of Jeremiah 31, where he makes a new covenant with us to write his laws in our heart. We won't be ready to go to be raptured to go to heaven unless we have that those laws in our heart. So we need it, and we need to understand the context of, of going to the land of the covenant, uh, which he promised to our fathers and to Abraham. Paul says, if you're Christ, you're Abraham's seed, heirs according to the promise. When you cannot buy or sell or hide from the UN, which is the beast, power, and they're going to force false worship on you, uh, you better be in the land of the covenant where you can enjoy freedom in a movement that God will have and be his. Because in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. Okay, And yes, it doesn't mean after those kings when no king is standing and when Christ comes in the sky. You know, the, the sequence in Revelation 17, 18 is that Babylon falls. The merchants weep. There's no king standing when Babylon falls. But Christ comes in the 19th chapter on a white horse. But in the days of those kings, God's going to set up the kingdom. It's before that. It's really at the beginning of the end time. When he knocks in the wedding parable of Luke 12, 36, and 37, we're to be open and we can make a covenant with him and be his covenant-keeping people. And that's what Ellen White said. That's her last definition of the church. Uh, she says what God purposed to do for the world through Israel, the chosen nation, he will finally accomplish through his church on earth today, even his covenant-keeping people. And to them will be fulfilled all the covenant promises made by Jehovah to that ancient people. So we got uh, some eschatology, some events that we have not been seeing, just as the true witness calls uh, the messenger to Laodicea blind and naked, it's, that message, by the way, is addressed to the agalos. Uh, it means messenger to the church. Uh, the true witness is saying the preachers don't see what's coming, and they're naked. Blind and naked is a bad combination when there's a knock at the door. You can't find the door, and if you found it, you can't open. You're naked, okay? This is uh, worst possible imagery, and we think we're great. Well, I think not, and I think big trouble is coming. Uh, from the days of Ellen White when they hijacked her school and taught a pharmacology to be accredited and all of our schools. We wonder why the young people are leaving the church. Well, they didn't really get the kind of education Ellen White had in mind. I took the course in college. I understand it. 
most people don't have that benefit today. So sorry, uh, we're out of time, but uh, we'll look on a different topic next time. Thank you for being with us. God bless you, and uh, we'll see you again at the top.